Wayne Streamers are extremely popular, and rightly so. They perform extremely well for the money. Using the digital output to feed a more upmarket DAC is seen as a very clever approach. But is it? A popular demand, I investigated the sound difference between a good DAC fed from a Wim Mini, a Wim Pro Plus and a more upmarket Magna Mano MK3 Farad. I have reviewed all three streamers individually. See the description for the reviews. Since there is no difference between the digital board in a Wim Pro and a Wim Pro Plus, I only tested the Pro Plus here. But before I start, first some background. How can a digital signal sound different? Bits are bits and only when bits are lost the sound quality could be different. But then the device isn't functioning correctly. I can assure you this is not the case. The measurement equipment behind me could easily check that. Still many, including me, hear differences in sound quality when changing one digital source for another. Well, we now know the problem is analog. Those that follow my channel already know this and can skip to the next chapter, but given the large number of people that call this snake oil, I'll explain it again. There's no such thing as a digital signal. SPDIF, AES-EBU, I2S and Ethernet are all variations in voltage. Toslink transports variations in light intensity, thus they are all analog signals. The type of waveform used is square wave, again this is an analog signal, and analog signals can easily be distorted. Because of bandwidth limitations square waves will change shape slightly and noise most likely be added to. This will cause slight variations in the timing during the digital to analog conversion, which in turn causes time smearing in the analog signal. Depending on the spectrum of the time variations during the conversion, the lows can get lost. Voices and brass can go sound sharp. Sibilance often gets accentuated. The stereo image will deteriorate. The sound might stick to the loudspeakers and so on. Since originally data transport is designed for computer applications, this is not a problem in the ICT world. For both audio and video, at an average quality, it won't be a problem either. The time smearing that might be the result of that might easily get masked by the equipment used. But when better audio equipment is used, it becomes more noticeable with every step up in quality. So if you use a 400 euros AV receiver, you might not hear any difference between a cheap and a high quality stream. But using a well chosen 1000 euro amp with a ditto 500 euro DAC, differences in sound quality will be clear. The same phenomenon occurs with the network switches and filters. See the description for links to videos on this subject, including on measurements by my colleague Jaap Veenstra of Alpha Audio. It might be good to watch at least the reviews of the player and the DAC while Jaap's comprehensive work on measurements might be interesting for those that need them to be convinced. To make the most sense, I use my reference setup 2A. The differences won't be that big when using my setup 3 and if I would have used my setup 1, it wouldn't be much of a reference to the majority of people that requested this test. The amplifier in setup 2A is the Marantz PMKI Pearl Light. It drives the acoustic energy radiance 1 loudspeakers connected over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. The Rail C5 subwoofer provides some extra bottom and is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. Since last week the DAC here is the fantastic Holo Audio CN2 that I bought immediately after I reviewed it. Then the Weems. I first listened to the Wim Mini using the standard power supply. A Toslink cable that came with the Mini was used to connect it to the Holo Audio DAC. Since the Mini has no Ethernet receptacle, the connection to the network was made over Wi-Fi to the TP-Link Deco M4 mesh network. 
that was connected over CAT6 patch cable to the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TPP switch, which in turn is connected to the Zixel GS1900-10HB switch downstairs over fiber optic connection. From the Zixel there is a CAT6 to the internet router that is also downstairs. The Intel NUC 10i7 FNH is connected directly to the Netgear switch and runs Rune Rock on an M.2 SSD and has the music stored on an internal 8 terabyte Samsung 870 QVO SSD. Then the Wim Mini was replaced by the Wim Pro Plus. This time the connection to the network was over CAT6 patch cable to the Upton Audio Ether Regen switch with Upton Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. The Ether Regen was connected to the Netgear switch over a CAT6 cable. I also tested the result when using a Wi-Fi connection but I preferred the cable connection in combination with the Ether Regen switch. This way I was least dependent on the local Wi-Fi and Ethernet quality. Then I replaced the RIM Pro Plus with the Magna Mano MK3 Farad streamer running Rupee XL. Since my Magna has I2S and AES EBU out, I used a Neutric AES EBU to SPDIF converter for optimal impedance matching and a professional BNC to connect to the DAC. Using the I2S or AES EBU might have introduced an advantage for the Magna. It is absolutely not my intention to bash the Wim players. They are remarkably good products for the money with a very good app and multi-room playback. But for the money is the keyword here. To give you an idea about the component cost, one of the key components of digital audio sources is the clock crystal. It ideally provides every next audio sample perfectly on time and we are talking femtoseconds precision in high end equipment. One quadrillionth or one millionth of a billionth of a second. Crystals that perform that good cost tens of dollars while there are also crystals used in audio equipment that cost 25 cents. I don't know the prices paid for the crystals in the devices on the test here. That depends on the quality and time of season while the price finally paid is held secret to keep the competition uninformed. But it might be clear that a $100 streamer does not contain a $60 clock crystal, especially when you know that the retail price of equipment usually is five times the production cost. Think of transport, taxes, advertising and margins for the distributor and retailer. Production costs involve components, machines, wages, building and so on. Product engineering and design, production engineering and in case of streamers also programming the app and the logic in the streamer all have to be covered too. It would be my guess that a Wii Mini should cost clearly less than $10 on components. And that is including the housing that would need a mold and the power supply. So it's more likely that the clock crystal inside the Mini is a 25 cents type rather than a $1 type. What goes for the crystal also goes for capacitors, resistors and the microprocessor and the digital to analog converter chip. Although the latter is not tested here, it is included in the beams and thus paid for. All these components will have larger tolerances than more upmarket products and thus deliver a less precise clock signal at the digital to analog conversion in the external DAC. The question thus is, what's the influence on the sound quality when using a very good 1300 euro DAC? The sound character is coloured, voices are a bit nasal, lows don't go really deep and miss any form of resolution. There hardly is any stereo image, the sound sticks to the loudspeakers so there is no phantom image of, for instance, a singer that should be in the middle between the loudspeakers. This sounds like the first Sonos Connect that at that time costed four or five times the price of the Mini. I rate the Mini halfway my reference setup 3. As mentioned before, the Wim Pro and Pro Plus have identical digital boards, only the analog board differs. 
hence the digital outputs of both are equal. The sound is less coloured and voices are less nasal than when the mini is used. There is the good beginning of a stereo image but it is not deep nor wide compared to the reference. I consider the Wimpro Plus with standard power supply lower end setup 2. I also tried it with an S Booster BOTW PMP Eco power supply. That does make a difference but no further than halfway my setup 2 and will add 300 euros to the cost price. Together almost the price of the Eversolar DMP A6 standard edition. Unfortunately I don't stock that one, otherwise I would have tried it. As comparison this would have been rather unfair since it cost almost 1500 euros. But the intention here is to show how much more sound quality can be achieved using a digital output of a higher quality streamer. It sounds clean of distortion, well timed and almost totally free of sibilance problems. The stereo image is excellent, the lows go deep and have a lot of texture. Mid range sounds very velvety, very natural, clean natural voices and strings, while brass sounds as brass should sound. Highs are very silky, triangle and glockenspiel sound almost perfect. It performs around halfway the reference set of one. These were of course the description of the sound quality of the streamer and the DAC combined. You have reported using DACs ranging from low budget AliExpress DACs to somewhat older high end DACs. Since it is virtually impossible to make combinations of a number of DACs varying in price with these or even more streamers. I had to make choices. The point to be made here was thinking that a 100 Euro streamer sounds just as good as a 1500 Euro one because the signal is digital. It is a mistake. If you want a guideline, spend just as much on a streamer as you do on a DAC. Only in extreme cases this might be different. An example? The Wim Mini, powered with its own power supply and connected over the Toslink cable it came with to my Grim Audio Mu2 used as a DAC. That sounds almost as good as the interior streamer of the grid. But to achieve that you need the extremely competent jitter remover integrated in the Grim. It is the only one I know that does that at this level. But it will set you back 18 grand. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. See you next week Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.